Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. I am your host, Tim Greco, coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. I know how hard and difficult it is for some of you to get to church and Bible study, so I want to go ahead and bring the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word, thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. Before we get into this powerful word the Lord has just for you, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough. We thank you so much for life. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to lift up your name. Lord, I thank you for everybody who is listening. Lord, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for those who are behind the scenes, Lord, to make this possible. May nothing come out of my mouth that's not of you, Lord. We pray for a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing love, prayers, support, and contributions to the ministry. For many of you who don't know, we're raising funds for 52 weeks of radio time in 2023, as I have already started recording. We are reaching over six states and over 300 million people because of your generous contributions, because of the grace of God. Please visit the website and please prayerfully consider contributing to the ministry for some things in ministry do cost money. And it's only because we're reaching over 3 million people in six states because of the contributions given to us to make that possible. God is a good God. He's good all the time. Before I got on this program, I was spending time in prayer asking God what it is he wants me to speak on. The Lord said, I just want you to step out in faith and trust and believe in me that I'll give you the words to speak from beginning to the end. And so that's what I'm doing. No notes, no Bible, no nothing. Just me, you, and the presence of God. See, before my rela relationship with Jesus Christ, living in this sin-filled, corrupted world, I thought that I was living life when in all actuality, I was living a lie. It wasn't until I laid those things down at the foot of the cross that I learned the love of God, that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, living in this sin-filled, corrupted world, ever since a young age, I was taught that the things of this world was life, when in all actuality, the things of this world was a lie. The lowercase g God of this world system, the enemy, Satan, the devil, he's an idiot, he's a fool, and he's a liar. He wants us to think that sexual immorality is the way, that drugs is the way, that alcohol is the way, for some that homosexuality is the way, uh, gambling is the way, lying, stealing, cheating is the way. Those are all lies from the enemy. Today, the Lord wants you to know that if you're struggling in any of those areas, Jesus loves you. See, the problem with the church today is they have gotten into a competition as to who could fake the funk the most. Well, today, it's time to be transparent. Today, it's time to be open and honest with God. It's time to open up your heart and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I made many mistakes in my life. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, Lord God. Please come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Change my life. Give me your Holy Spirit. Forgive me of my sins, Lord God, for I have sinned against you. When I gave my life to Jesus, December 24th, 2001, it was the best day that ever happened to me. I was out on the streets at the age of 14. I was brought into somebody's home to have a roof over my head. I was expelled from school. I was doing bad things. I was at a family's house, which of whom I didn't really know. And they all left and I was there by myself. It was a cold winter night. It was snowing outside. And when that door shut, when they left to go out and I was left in that living room all by myself, I remember like yesterday, I started to cry. I had things in my pocket that I shouldn't have had. I was all by myself. 
I didn't know where my family was. I was expelled from school. I was doing a lot of bad things. I found out that just in a few months, I was going to be a father. I dropped down to my knees and I cried out to God. I said, Lord, please come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I'm sick and tired of trying to get right to get with you because for some reason I can never get right. But today I'm going to get with you to receive the Holy Spirit because I know it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that I'm going to get right. I'd rather live life falling down with God so I have somebody to help me up than live life rejecting God to be stomped on by the enemy. See, you are valuable. You are special. Today, the Lord wants you to know that you're loved. If you're high, you're loved. If you're drunk, you're loved. If you're a homosexual, you're loved. If you're gambling, you, you're loved. If you've committed adultery, you're loved. If you have fornicated, you're loved. If you've lied, stolen, and cheated before, you're loved. What am I saying? God hates those things, but he doesn't hate you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sacrificed his son Jesus for you. Jesus was obedient all the way up until the point of death. When Jesus was born from Virgin Mary, placed in his mother's tummy by God himself, he knew that there was going to be a day when he was going to be nailed to the cross. He knew that his ministry was going to start at the age of 30. He knew that he was going to be flogged. He knew that he was going to be talked about, spit on. He knew that his beard was going to be ripped out of his face. He knew that a crown of thorns was going to be put on his head. He knew that blood would be dripping down his face. He knew that his flesh was going to be so destroyed that you could see his bones. He knew. But yet he did it anyways. He knew that you might be an alcoholic and he did it anyways. He knew that you might be a drug dealer, a drug addict. He did it anyways. He knew that there was a possibility that you were going to deny him and he did it anyways. He knew that there was a possibility that you weren't going to live for him and he did it anyways. When he was making humanity before the foundations of the earth was ever laid, he would make somebody and say, oh, they're going to accept me as Lord and Savior. Oh, they're going to accept me as Lord and Savior. Oh, they're not going to live for me. They're going to hate me. As a matter of fact, they're going to try to turn people against me, but I'm still going to give them life and try to give it to them more abundantly. And it's on them whether they accept me or not. But I know this person right here is not going to accept me, but I'm still going to do my part as Lord and give them life. Life is a gift. Even though God knew when he was making certain people before the foundations of the earth was ever laid, he still gave them life because that's who he is. God doesn't lower his standards based off of what humanity says, does, thinks, or believes. God does what only God can do because only God can do what only God can do. See, God is worthy to be praised because only God can rain bread down from heaven. Only God can speak through a burning bush. Only God can split the Red Sea. Only God can free his people out of a land of bondage. Only God can sacrifice his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but of everlasting life. Only God, only God, only God. See, if God was only able to do what humanity can do, then he wouldn't be worthy to be praised. If God can do what, let me rephrase that. If Tim can do what God can do, then God wouldn't be worthy to be praised because Tim is not worthy to be praised. If God can only do what Betty Sue can do, then God wouldn't be worthy to be praised because Betty Sue isn't worthy to be praised. But God had to separate himself from humanity. He had to say and do things that separates himself from us because he is holy. He had to say and do certain things that only God can say and do because if he was on the same level as humanity, he wouldn't be worthy to be praised. Many people can't figure out how 
He spoke through a burning bush. Many people can't figure out how bread was raining down from heaven. Many people can't figure out how he split the Red Sea. Guess what? It's all supposed to be done by faith. It doesn't fa take faith to believe that Tim picked up this coaster and set it on the table. It doesn't take faith to believe that Tim picked up another coaster and set it on the table. It doesn't take faith to believe that tur Tim turned off this lamp. It doesn't take faith to believe that because you see it. It takes faith to believe the living word of God. It takes faith to believe in God. It takes faith to believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. It takes faith to believe that God spoke through a burning bush. It takes faith to believe that God left the sun up in the sky longer than it was supposed to be in order for his people to win the battle because God will perform miracles on your behalf. If God had to have the sun hang up there a little longer than normal just for his people to gain victory in battle, he can do anything for you. You might be going through a hard time right now. You might be going through a difficult time right now. And if God can rain bread down from heaven, if he can have the sun hang up there longer than it's supposed to, if he can do all these different miracles, he can and will perform a miracle in your life if you only believe. A lot of things are a mystery. I don't know how the word of God was written so perfectly in 66 books with zero contradictions. Well, I do know because in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The Bible is God in written form. So if God is perfect, the word of God is perfect. If the word of God is perfect, there are zero contradictions. For people who say there are contradictions in the word, there are contradictions in themselves. Scripture backs up scripture. And when you put scripture with scripture and it all lines up together from Genesis to Revelation, from the books that Moses wrote, the first five, the Pentateuch, all the way to Revelation where John wrote and it all comes together like a perfect puzzle piece. Only God can do that because guess what? If you and I gathered 64 other people, you and I to make 66 to write a book, it'd be total chaos. It'd be a total mess. Somebody would write about the Chicago Bears. Somebody would write about Canada. Somebody would write about dogs. Somebody would write about shoes. Somebody would write about buildings. Somebody would write about tennis. Somebody, the book wouldn't make sense. Wow, that just ministered to me. Because of the Bible, if you read it, if you have faith to believe that the Bible is God in written form, it will blow your mind. I mean, how does the book, how does the living word of God, from God creating the heavens of the earth, Genesis 1-1, if you don't believe Genesis 1-1, you have, you have no there's no reason to go and read the rest of the word of God. I believe that God purposely put in Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth because what God is saying is, if you don't believe Genesis 1-1, then just don't even read the rest of the book because guess what? The living word of God is not a buffet. You can't go in there and, and do what you want to do and not stop doing certain things that you don't want to stop doing. It's not a buffet line. You're not at the golden corral when you read the word of God. You're not at the buffet when when you lead, read the word of God, you're reading the living word of God. You either believe all of it, you're either 100% saved, because if you believe in 99% of the Bible, you're 100% lost. I don't know where these religions are getting that you can pray to Mary. I don't know where these religions are getting that Peter was the first pope. I don't know where these religions are getting, don't pray from the heart, but say repetitive prayers. 
when Jesus showed us how to pray, I believe it was in Matthew 6, it was a model on how to pray. Is it wrong to say that prayer? No, it's not. If you're also praying from the heart, but if that's the only prayer that you're saying, go back a couple verses and Jesus said, don't pray like the hypocrites do. You're a hypocrite. We don't sugarcoat nothing here in this ministry. I didn't come to tickle your ears. If you want your ears tickled, then I'll tickle them with this. If you're not born again, you go to hell. The rainbow does not represent homosexuality. Go find your own symbol. The rainbow is a symbol from God to us that he'll never flood the earth again. If you want your ears tickled, let me tell you that drunkenness is a sin. If you want your ears tickled, let me tell you pornography is a sin. If you want your ears tickled, let me tell you drunkenness, homosexuality, the list goes on, is a sin. What am I saying? I'm saying that I love you so much that I want to reveal to you the lies of the enemy. I'm saying that I love you so much that I'm taking time out of my night to tell you that the lowercase g God that you might be serving is lying to you. I'm taking time out of my night to tell you that you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. I'm taking time out of my night in hopes that I can help you be taken off that broad road of destruction and put on that narrow path that leads to life. I'm taking time out of my night. Who is this guy on here telling me that drunkenness is a sin, homosexuality is a sin, gambling is a sin, drunkenness is a sin, smoking is a sin. My name is Tim, and it comes from the living word of God. See, you were not made that way. Jesus is saying, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Today, God reaches out with arms wide open and say, homosexual, come to salvation. Drug addict, come to salvation. Alcoholic, come to salvation. If you messed up in your life, come to salvation because I love you. If you stay in that sin, if you continue practicing that sin, if you continue living in that sin, that's what you chose to do. You don't get perfect before you come to God because you never will be. I didn't try to get perfect before I came to God. I came to God so he can help me to strive for perfection, which I'm still far from it and I always will be far from it. When you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And today he wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that you're valuable. He wants you to know that you're cared about. Yesterday, I came across this shirt that y'all need Jesus. And what caught my eye on this shirt was the name of Jesus. And when I looked at it, I read it and I said, y'all need Jesus. And I said, wait a minute, I need Jesus. What would it be like if I'm going around saying, y'all need Jesus? How about I take a look at the log in my own eye? How about I ask God to search out my own heart? How about I let you guys know that I need Jesus? The only way that other people are going to get to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior is if I know Jesus, is if you know Jesus, because we love God because he first loved us. We answer to the call of salvation because of God's grace. It takes faith to believe in God's grace. It takes faith to believe in salvation. It takes faith to know that God is with you, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. In 38 years of life, I've been programmed one way where when I got saved, I had to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. The Lord had to show me, hey, everything the enemy taught you out there was a lie. He taught you that a man is to be feared. A man is confrontational. A man is abusive. A man is a tough guy. A man is an alcoholic. No, 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 no. That's everything but a man. A man can't cry is what the enemy will teach you. 
The enemy comes in and tells you everything opposite of God. When I got saved, I had to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And I said, wait a minute, a real man's not confrontational. That's what the enemy does to his people in lying that that's what a man is. A man is kind. When I got saved, I had to learn that it's okay to cry because if Jesus wept, then I'm, excuse me, then I'm going to weep. Crying is okay. It takes a real man to cry because it takes a real man to humble himself. There's people out there today that claim they've been through oh so much in life. If you've been through oh so much in life, then why don't you know Jesus? It was the drug and alcohol addiction. It was the streets at 14. It was the father at 16. It was the military being a veteran. It was jail five different times in three different states that led me to want a relationship with Jesus Christ. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. What the enemy tries to harm you with, God will turn it around for the good. You might feel like you're in bondage right now. The Israelites, God's people, were in Egypt. They were in a land of bondage. And they were used as slaves for many, many, many years. Many of you might feel enslaved to the things of this world. Many of you might feel enslaved to the bars, the clubs, the drinking, the smoking, the cussing, the gambling, the sexual immorality. Well, I'm here to tell you today that God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. Just call upon his name and his name is Jesus. You get saved right now. It's as easy as that. You get saved right now. The enemy's going to lie to you. Oh no, you better, you better stop A, B, and C before you get saved. No, because he knows you ain't ever going to stop A, B, and C without the Lord. You get saved right now. You call upon the name of the Lord right now. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus right now. You believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead right now. You tell Jesus you love him right now. You know that he's saying, come unto me because I know you're heavy laden and I'll give you rest. He's telling you that right now. He's got big plans for you. If I was still out in the world doing worldly things around worldly people in worldly places, I wouldn't be right here right now sharing the word of God. And that's exactly what the enemy's plans were. Right now, some of you are still out in the world doing worldly things with worldly people in worldly places. And it's keeping you from knowing your purpose. It's keeping you from knowing your identity. It's keeping you from living up to your full potential. Today, the Lord wants you to know that you're loved. Today, the Lord wants you to know that you're cared about. Today, the Lord wants you to know that you're valuable. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. When he made you, he didn't make a mistake. If you're alive today, you still have a purpose and God still has a plan for you. Some people might be saying, how can God have a plan for me when I'm being abused? Get away from the abuse. Some say, well, it's not as easy as you say. Well, I get that. I understand that. You got to start making moves. You got to start making changes in your life. You got to start doing something because you don't deserve to be smacked around. You don't deserve to be called names. You don't deserve to be beaten. You need to get everybody out of your life that makes you feel less than. You need to get everybody out of your life that's hurting you. You need to get people in your life that are going to love you, that are going to pray for you, that are going to care about you. Bad company corrupts good character. The enemy has put you in a bad place around bad people in bad situations because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God. I used to say way back in the day, get away from me talking to me about God because if there's a God, I wouldn't be on the streets. If there's a God, I wouldn't be drunk. If there's a God, I wouldn't be living in my car. If there's a God. I was drunk on the streets, living in my car, because I denied God. 
The problem wasn't with God. The problem was with me. The problem wasn't with God. The problem was with my lack of faith. When I gave my life to Jesus, he started moving in my life. I went to my first Bible study. I was scared out of my mind. At Bible study, I went to go share my testimony with the inmates in jail. From that jail, I met somebody, and I had the privilege of going to preach at the homeless shelter. When I went to the homeless shelter, I met somebody that had some books written, and he got my poetry published. Take delight in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. At the homeless shelter, I met somebody that had a television program. I was a co-host on his program, but this man stole money from me. I don't even want to call him a man. He's a thief. He stole money from me. And while it looked bad because he was a pastor, it turned into a blessing. Because look at where God has brought me now. Something I've learned in life is a lot of the time when something bad is happening, a blessing is on his way. I look at the majority of the blessings in my life and I look at how they first started off as something bad. They started off as an attack. And then I was blessed. They started off as a storm. And then I was blessed. They started off as a trial. And I focused on the Lord. And I focused on the lessons that he was teaching me. And right now, here today, I focus on God. See, the problem isn't with the person who has made mistakes and repented and was forgiven. It's people that look down on people, gossip about people, sow discord about people. Keep looking down on me for the mistakes I made years ago. I'm not the problem. I've repented. I'm forgiven. The problem is with you sowing discord, hating, and gossiping all while claiming to be a Christian. If nobody told you they love you today, I love you. God loves you. I pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.